Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is Rob here. Uh, today's topic is Q and Q. Uh, and so if we look at this over here, we'll see an original ethernet frame, an 802.1Q frame, and then a Q and Q frame. So original ethernet frame, nothing special. Uh, preamble, destination Mac, source Mac, etc. And then we have an 802.1Q frame right here where there's uh, a VLAN tag. So you're going to have to be familiar with 802.1Q VLAN trunking to understand the concept of Q and Q. Um, but for those of you that might be fuzzy on it, it's essentially you're just uh, you're 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 sending traffic for multiple VLANs over a single link. So say you had two switches, say those switches had VLANs 10, 20, and 30 on them, uh, you wouldn't actually have to run a cable from a switch port uh, corresponding to each VLAN to the other switch to get that traffic across. So say VLAN 10 to VLAN 10, VLAN 20 to VLAN 20, so on and so forth. You could run um, one link, configure it as a trunk, or you could. Uh, create it as a uh, port channel as well, tag those VLANs, and uh, when the frame traverses that trunk link, it will have a tag in there uh, to say, hey, I'm, you know, I'm on VLAN 10, for example. So when it arrives at the other switch, uh, that tag is uh, torn out of there, and then the switch knows to throw that frame on VLAN 10. Q&Q um, &Q is essentially just 802.1Q in 802.1Q. The reason for that is, is so, uh, say you have a Metro Ethernet connection, and um, you have two uh, two sites, and the the uh, the provider can uh, keep your traffic separate uh, from other customers, and you can use whatever VLAN you want. So uh, the traffic can transparently traverse the provider network, and then customers can have overlapping VLANs because we're sticking this other tag in front of the original customer tag. So. If the customer, say, is on VLAN 10, like in the example I'm going to show you in a moment here, and then the provider uh, is on uh, VLAN 101, so the frame uh, going into the provider network will be tagged with 10. So if we look at this, this would be uh, for VLAN 10. And then once it enters the provider network, another tag will be applied that is going to have the tag number of uh, 101. So it will transparently traverse the provider network. The provider network has no knowledge of VLAN 10, uh, just VLAN 101. So I'm going to move on to the configuration. I'm going to give you a very basic uh, example on, on how this would be set up. So we just have one customer uh, with two sites here. So I'm going to start with uh, routers one and two on the customer sites, and then I will configure the provider network. So uh, let's open up router one. And we'll go to interface gig zero slash zero. We'll do a no shut. And we'll go to gig zero slash zero dot ten. So we're using sub interfaces so that way we can tag our frames. And that is what we use sub interfaces for. So that way we can use the encapsulation command and say encapsulation dot one Q and then our VLAN number. So in this instance, it will be 10. And then now we can assign an IP address. I'm just going to use a private um, uh, class C address. So I'll say 192.168.10.1. And then we will move over here to router 2 and do the same thing. So again, it'll be uh, gig 0 slash 0. Do a no shutdown. Interface gig zero slash zero dot ten encapsulation dot one q whoops uh, I forgot the ten so encapsulation dot one q ten IP address one nine two one six eight ten dot two slash twenty four mask all right so for this simple example that's all we have to do on the customer routers uh, next we're going to configure the provider side. And we'll start with uh, gigabit zero slash three, the uh, link that is attached to the uh, customer router. So we'll go interface gig zero slash three. And we'll say switch port mode. And we're not gonna say switch port mode access. We're not gonna say switch port mode trunk. We're actually going to say switch port mode dot one Q tunnel. So that's what tells this uh, switch here that this switch port is a dot one Q tunnel and to apply that other VLAN tag and we define that by saying switch port access VLAN and then the provider VLAN, which is 101. So switch port access VLAN 101. Now we're going to create that VLAN 101. 
And then everything else is just going to be a regular 802.1Q uh, trunk interface. So the link between switch one and switch two, and then switch two and switch three, we're going to issue the standard commands for uh, 802.1Q VLAN trunking. So we'll go interface gig zero slash one, switch port trunk encapsulation dot one Q, switch port mode trunk. And then you can also do um, switch port trunk allowed VLAN and native VLAN, uh, but I'm just keeping it simple. So we'll just, uh, we'll trunk all VLANs uh, across this interface. Okay, and that's it for switch one. So let's move over to switch two. We'll create our VLAN 101. And we'll issue the interface range gig zero slash one through two. And then switch port trunk encapsulation dot one Q. Switch port mode trunk. And I actually forgot one thing. Let's move back to switch one really quick. And that's what happens when I try to move fast. <laughs> um, we want to change the MTU. So um, these are virtual switches in GNS3, obviously. Uh, so it's done a little bit different. I believe on a, uh, a layer two switch or even a layer three switch, the MTU is changed a little bit differently. I think you can change it on the interface, but it's typically uh, um, by issuing the system MTU command. Uh, but on these virtual switches in GNS3, it's under the interface. So we'll say MTU 1504. Uh, the reason for that is, is because the additional uh, 802.1Q tag adds an additional uh, four bytes of overhead. So that's why we want to increase that MTU so these frames will fit. So we'll do the same thing here on gig uh, 0 slash 1 and 0 slash 2. We'll say MTU 1504. And we just have switch 3 left. So we'll go uh, configuration terminal, VLAN 101. Interface gig zero slash two, switch port trunk encapsulation dot one Q, switch port mode trunk, MTU 1504, and then interface gig zero slash three, I'm sorry, uh, not two, three, the link connected to the uh, customer site two router, switch port mode dot one Q tunnel, switch port access VLAN. 101. And that should do it. So let's go do show dot one Q tunnel. And there are some more uh, in-depth show commands you can do as well uh, to verify things. Uh, again, I'm just keeping it simple in this video. So we see that uh, our dot one Q tunnel uh, ports are uh, gig zero slash three. Let's move back over here to switch one really quick. Do show dot one Q tunnel. And again, uh, gig zero slash three. And then you can also, if you wanted to tag uh, the native VLAN as well. Uh, so say you have a customer that has untagged traffic um, traversing the, or attempting to traverse the tunnel, you could issue the uh, VLAN, uh, VLAN dot one Q tag native. All right, so the final step is let's test reachability. So we'll go over here to router one. So uh, remember, we configured this with the IP address 192.168.10.1. And then router two is 192.168.10.2. So let's see if we can uh, send an ICMP echo. So we'll go do ping 192.168.10.2. 100% success rate. And over here to router two. Do ping 192.168.10.1. Uh, and there you go. All right, so that is uh, Q&Q. If you want to learn more in depth, um, you can uh, let me know. Leave me a comment in the comment section below if you want to see a more in-depth video. Thanks for watching this video. I really hope you learned something, and I'll see you in the next one.